In this demonstration, we're going to see how to set up E911, both from inside of the control panel and from the Link Server Management shell. Now, keep in mind before we go into the demonstration that E911 does require that you've got Enterprise Voice configured. I've already defined my mediation server configuration and my gateways inside of the topology builder. I've also defined my dial plans, my voice policies, my routes, and my trunk configurations. I've also set up a route for emergency calling for E911. So to start this demonstration, we're going to go into our control panel. We'll log in as the administrator. And then from inside of our control panel, we're going to navigate down to our network configuration. And at the top of the console, we'll click on Location Policy. And you can see that I have a default policy here called Global. From inside of my Location Policies, I can define a policy here globally. We can also apply policies at the user or the site level. If you apply a policy at the site level, you're going to see your Microsoft Link Sites, Central Sites and Branch Sites. But keep in mind that if you create a user level policy, like for example here, I'm going to create a user level policy for Mesa. This policy isn't configured, but we're going to come back to it in just one moment. But if I click on the link over here or the tab for sites, you'll notice that I have this site called Mesa. And then underneath it where it says location policy, you'll be able to see that user level policy right there. So if a user's in a site that has a user level policy applied to the site, the site level user policy would actually override a user tag level policy applied directly to the user. Now going back over to my location policies, let's take a look at the settings for the Mesa policy that we're defining. As you can see, my policy is called Mesa, and the scope is user mode, which again can be applied to a networking site. Not a link site, it's a network site for link. Underneath the name, we can define if this policy is enabled for E911 or not. If it is enabled, that means my clients will try to get their location information from the list server. And if they dial an emergency dial string, they'll send that location information along with the call. We can also specify if a location is required or not. We have three choices, required, not required, or disclaimer. So if a client contacts the list server and is not able to obtain an address from the list server, the client will then respond based upon how this policy is defined. We could prompt the client for an address. We can also specify if the E911 can only be used by the emergency services or if it can be used by other applications as well. Here, let me click on these selections. I'm going to enable E911. I'll provide the client with a disclaimer if they're coming in from a non-defined location. And then underneath the PST and usage record, this will define how that call gets routed. And here I have an enterprise voice PST and usage record called emergency calling. At Kavrock Fitness, we're only using 911 as our E911 dial number. We don't have any foreign offices with other emergency dialing strings. But if you had a dial mask, that would be another number that also got routed, in our case, to 911. At the bottom of the console, we can define a notification URI, and that will be a SIP address where an instant message gets sent to notify something like our security desk that there is an emergency call going out. We can also define a conference URI in the conferencing mode. This would allow me to bring a third party in on the call. So here you see an example of SIP colon plus followed by the telephone number at contoso.com. This would be a SIP address, again, probably used for like our security desk so that they can be notified that there's a call going out and they can listen to the call. So the conferencing mode can either be one way where they can hear the call, so the audio goes in one direction to them, or it can be two way where we can hear them also. So if they were to speak, the emergency responders would hear them too. I'm going to commit my changes. Let's toggle that off. We're going to commit our changes. And I now have a new location policy called Mesa, which is a user or tag level policy that's currently not being applied. Now that we have a new location policy, let's take a look at some of our command line options that we have for configuration of E911. You have to keep in mind that there's a lot of command line options that go along with the configuration of this. And we're not going to look at all the different commandlets and all the different variations to the commandlets. We're going to start off this demonstration by opening up the Link Server Management shell. The first commandlet I'd like to introduce is set cs network site. I'm going to modify my existing site, and the identity of this site is called Mesa. We're going to define a network region ID for my networking site, so we're going to associate that networking site of Mesa with a region called Scottsdale. 
and we're going to identify a location policy called Mesa to apply to it. That's the user mode policy that we just created a moment ago. And you'll give that a moment. And you can see that I've now applied the settings to that policy. So let's take a look over here at my control panel. And if I open up my site called Mesa, you can see that I now have that location policy called Mesa being applied to it. Let's clear the screen. Here we have another example where I'm going to create a brand new networking site called Chandler. And I'm going to associate the Chandler network location with a network region ID called Scottsdale. And I'm going to apply the same exact location policy called Mesa. And once again, you can see that that ran without any problems. Let's clear the screen. If you're defining network locations or network sites, you also have to define the subnets that go along with those network sites. So here's an example where I'm going to create a new CS network subnet. The subnet identification is going to be 172.11.32.0, and I'm using 20 bits in the subnet mask. I'm associating this subnet with my site called Chandler. And you can see that that ran without a problem. I can also create my subnet objects from inside of the control panel. Let's clear the screen. In our next commandlet, we're going to set the CS location, which is called global. We have a location policy, the default global policy. We're going to enable the enhanced emergency services by setting it to true. The location required setting is going to be set to disclaimer. And you can see our disclaimer. Your company policy requires you to set a location. If you don't set a location, the emergency services will not be able to locate you in an emergency. Please set a location. When the call gets routed out, we're going to be using a PSTN usage record called emergency calling. The emergency dial string is 911. We also have an emergency dial mask of 112, which also gets routed over to 911. We have a conference URI, SIP colon plus 1425-555-0123 at covrockfitness.com. We're using the location information for E911 exclusively, and the clients will update their policy every two hours. Let's hit enter. And you can see that we've just updated our policy without any problems. Let's clear our screen. When it comes to populating our list services database with the wire map, we can provide entries inside of the list database that will map network addresses down to civic addresses. Network addresses such as subnets, wireless access points, switches, and even getting right down to the switch port level. Let's take a look at an example of populating our list database. Here you can see an example where I'm setting a list subnet. I'm adding a subnet into the list server database on SQL. The description is subnet1. My location is set to location 1, and the company name is Kavrock Fitness. The house number is 1234. The house number suffix is null. Pre-directional is empty. Pre-directional or post-directional would apply to a street. For example, North Main Street or Main Street Northeast. Does the direction come before or after? The street name is 163rd. The suffix is av. Post-directional, Northeast. The city is Scottsdale. The state is Arizona. I've got my postal code, and I also have my country identifier. Keep in mind that these are the mandatory attributes that you have to define with your command line, or the mandatory options. Let's run our command line and see what it looks like. And as you can see, I've just added the subnet 157.56.76.0, subnet 1, into my location database, into my list server. Let's clear the screen, and we'll take a look at another example. In the next example, I want to add a wireless access point into my list server database. You'll notice the command looks very similar but I'm using a set-cslist wireless access point commandlet, and I'm identifying the WAP based off of a BSS ID, the basic service set identifier. The remainder of the command looks very similar. So let's hit enter. And once again, you can see that I've just added an entry into the list server database without a problem. Keep in mind that we also have a set-cslist switch and a set-cslist port commandlet that we can use for identifying switches or switch ports inside of our database. Let's clear the screen and take a look at a couple of other commandlets. Once you have records inside of your list server database, you would then typically verify the records up against the master street address guide. So if I have an E911 services provider across a SIP trunk connection, I have to tell my Microsoft Link server where to connect to and how to authenticate when verifying the records in our database. Let's take a look at an example of a commandlet. In my virtual environment, I don't have connectivity to a provider right now. So I provided some sample data. Set-CS list services provider is your commandlet. 
you specify the services provider name, which you can provide whatever name you'd like. But what we do have to define is the validation services URL, and that's given to you by your provider. It's where you're going to connect to to verify the records in your database up against the Master Street Address Guide. You also have to define your certificate file name, and then you point to the certificate file itself provided by your provider, and you provide your password. Let's clear the screen again. The next commandlet that I would use would be used to verify the records inside of my database up against the Master Street Address Guide. So now that my server knows where to connect to and how to authenticate, I would use a command that looks like this. get -cslist civic address. We pipe the results into a test -cslist civic address commandlet, and then we update the validation status inside of our database. Once we've validated all of our records, we can then publish them. Let's take a look at what that commandlet looks like. Let's clear the screen. When you're ready to publish your commands, we would use the publish -cslist configuration commandlet. And as you can see, I just published my configuration. Those entries are now available to the clients. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration, and we'll see you in the next video.